Hey there, welcome to Burp Suite Basics. This room will cover the foundations of using Burp Suite Web Application Framework. Specifically, we will be looking at what Burp Suite is, an overview of the available tools in the framework, installing Burp Suite for yourself, navigating and configuring Burp Suite. The best way to learn is to try follow along. Go ahead and click the Start Machine button, as well as your attack box if you're using attack box. Task 2. What is Burp Suite? Burp Suite is a framework written in Java that aims to provide a one-stop shop for web application penetration testing. Burp Suite is also very commonly used when assessing mobile applications as the same features which make it so attractive for web app testing translate almost perfectly into testing the APIs powering most mobile apps. Burp can capture and manipulate all the traffic between an attacker and a web server this is the core of the framework. After capturing requests, we can choose to send them to other parts of the Burp Suite framework. This ability to intercept, view and modify web requests prior to them being sent to the target server makes Burp Suite perfect for any kind of manual web app testing. There are various different editions of Burp Suite available. We will be working with Burp Suite Community Edition as it is free to use for any non-commercial use. The Burp Suite Professional and Enterprise Editions both require expensive licenses but come with powerful additional features. Task 3. Features. Features of the Community Edition of Burp has a relatively limited feature set compared to the Pro version but it still has many superb tools available. Let's take a brief look at these. The proxy allows us to intercept and modify requests and responses when interacting with web applications. Intruder, although harshly rate limited in Burp community, allows us to spray an endpoint with requests. This is often used for brute force attacks or to fuzz endpoints. Repeater allows us to capture, modify, then resend the same request numerous times. This feature can be absolutely invaluable, especially when we need to craft a payload through trial and error or when testing the functionality of an endpoint for any flaws. Sequencer. We use Sequencer when assessing the randomness of tokens such as session cookie values or other supposedly random generated data. Decoder. Decoder provides a valuable service when transforming data either in terms of decoding captured information or encoding a payload prior to sending it to the target. Comparer. As the name suggests, Comparer allows us to compare two pieces of data at either word or byte level. Task 4 installation. Check out my video in order to see how to download and install Burp. Task 5 the dashboard. The dashboard interface is split into four equal quadrants. The tasks menu allows us to define background tasks that Burp will run whilst we use the application. The default live passive crawl will be more than suitable for our uses. The event log tells us what Burp Suite is doing as well as information about any connections that we are making through Burp. The issue activity section is exclusive to Burp Pro. It won't give us anything using Burp Community. The advisory section gives more information about the vulnerabilities found as well as references and suggested remediations. These could then be exported into a report. If I click on one of these, there's a SQL injection, all the information and hints plus remedies. Throughout the various tabs and windows of Burp Suite you will find little help icons, a question mark within a circle. Clicking on these will open a new window containing help for that section. These are extremely useful if you're ever stuck and don't know what a feature does. I'm clicking on the first one at the top of the dashboard and here you can see scrolling through we've got some useful information. Task 6 Navigation. Navigating around the Burp Suite GUI by default is done entirely using the top two menu bars. These allow you to switch between modules. If the selected module has more than one sub tab, then these can be selected using a second menu bar which appears directly below the original bar. It is common for module specific settings to be provided in these sub tabs. Burp also has keyboard shortcuts that allow quick navigation to key tabs. 
Task 7, Options, Options available for configuring BIRP. Global settings can be found in the User Options tab along the top menu bar. Project specific settings can be found in the Project Options tab. The options in the Connections sub tab allow us to control how BIRP makes connections to targets. The TLS sub tab allows us to enable and disable various TLS options as well as giving us a place to upload client certificates should a web app require us to use one of them for connections. Display allows us to change how Burp looks. The options here include things like changing the font, the scale, as well as setting the theme for the framework. I'm changing mine to dark as an example. The miscellaneous tab contains a wide variety of settings, including the key binding table, editing your hotkeys, which allows us to view and alter the keyboard shortcuts used by Burp Suite. Let's take a look at the project specific configurations available in the project options tab. These can be used to override the application wide settings. HTTP sub tab defines how Burp handles various aspects of the HTTP protocol. TLS allows us to override application wide TLS options as well as showing us a list of public server certificates for sites that we have visited. The sessions tab provides us with options for handling sessions. It allows us to define how Burp obtains, saves and uses session cookies that it receives from target sites. It also allows us to define macros which can be used to automate things such as logging into web applications. There are fewer options in the miscellaneous sub tab than in the equivalent tab for the user options section. Many of the options here are also only available if you have access to Burp Pro. Task 8 Burp Proxy. This is the most fundamental and most important of the tools available in Burp Suite. It allows us to capture requests and responses between ourselves and our target. These can then be manipulated or sent to other tools for further processing before being allowed to continue to their destination. This ability to intercept requests ultimately means that we can take complete control over our web traffic, an invaluable ability when it comes to testing web applications. We can also do various other things here, such as sending the request to one of the other Burp models, copying it as a curl command, saving it to a file, and many others. When we have finished working with Burp Proxy, we can click the Intercept is On button to disable the intercept, which will allow requests to pass through the proxy without being stopped. The logs can be viewed by going to the HTTP history, as I'm in now. It is worth noting that any requests captured here can be sent to other tools in the framework by right clicking them and choosing send to. Finally, there are also proxy specific options which we can view in the options sub tab. These options give us a lot of control over how the proxy operates. So it is an excellent idea to familiarize yourself with these. For example, the proxy will not intercept server responses by default unless we explicitly ask it to on a per request basis. We can override the default setting by selecting the intercept responses based on the one or more rules. The all request was intercepted rule is good for catching responses to all requests that were intercepted by the proxy. Another particularly useful section of the sub tab is the match and replace. You can make your own rules for most of the proxy options. So this is one section where looking around and experimenting will serve you very well. Task 9. Connecting through Foxy Proxy. I've made a video on this. Check it out. Task 10. Proxying HTTPS. I've included this in my video. Check it out. Task 11. Burp Browser, in addition to giving us the option to modify our regular web browser to work with the proxy, Burp also includes a built-in Chrome browser that is pre-configured to use the proxy without any of the modifications we just had to do. Be careful with this. There has been some incidences. If you don't know what you're doing and leave this open, the possibility of your system being hacked is pretty high. I always stick with setting up my own Foxy proxy and using my own browser. 12. Scoping and Target. One of the most important parts of using the proxy is scoping. 
it can get extremely tedious having burp capturing all of your traffic when it logs everything it muddies up logs and we may later wish to send to clients in short allowing burp to capture everything that can quickly become a massive pain what's the solution it's scoping setting a scope for the project allows us to define what gets proxied and what gets logged we can restrict burp to only target the web application that we want to test the easiest way to do this is by switching over to the target tab right clicking our target from our list on the left then choosing add to scope burp will then ask us whether we want to stop logging anything which isn't in scope most of the time we want to choose yes the scope sub tab allows us to control what we are targeting by either including or excluding domains and IPs. This is a very powerful section. It's well worth taking the time to get accustomed to using it. Task 13, sitemap. I'm going to attempt the first question. Take a look around. Visit every page link to from the home page, then check your sitemap. One endpoint should stand out as being very unusual. Go to my burp. It's open. I've got my browser open minimize so you can see I've entered the IP address we are given I'm going to switch on my intercept go back to my browser switch on foxy proxy so switch on burp and now I'm going to just start clicking on links and pages from the home page so our products and each time you can see I'm clicking forward in the background on burp this is in order to keep the pages from hanging well to stop prevent them from hanging so each time I'm clicking forward you can see the page will go through click around a few places keep doing this in order to build up the sitemap go back to the home page if you scroll down on the home page and see if there's any further links to click on there's one here submit a ticket click forward switch off my intercept I can switch off my foxy proxy in the target tab under the sub tab sitemap all the drop down arrows open them all up have a look for anything that looks unusual or stands out obviously this one here third one from the top stands out make sure that your response column is open in order to see the response that's what we were told in the question and if I click on this there's your flag under the response task 14 practical there is a client-side filter in place which prevents you from adding any special characters that aren't allowed in the email address let's enter legitimate data into the support form let's do pen tester at example.com as an email address and I'm going to put test attack as a query switch on foxy proxy turn my intercept button on and I'm going to submit the query and burp catches it in the background here you can see our pen tester at example.com email address I'm going to highlight this now we can type in the script that we were given so using the script tag with alert and then in brackets successful xss close my brackets and close my script tag and we need to url encode this and if you look on the right you'll see it says url encoding it shows you the top section highlighted and what it will be you can apply the changes or you can just press ctrl u and it will do the same thing and then go ahead and click forward and if you have a look at the page uh, let's see if it will stay there no just keep clicking forward until it looks like burp is cleared and then let's go back to your browser and there's the alert that shot up that we created successful xss